You're listening to international investment advisor Doug Goldstein on the Goldstein on Gelt Show, the financial show where we'll talk about how you can make the most of your money. With all the confusing financial chatter bombarding you each and every day, Goldstein on Gelt will give you the practical information you want and need about living a financially stable life. Here's your host, money maven Doug Goldstein. Okay, we are back. We are talking to Roland Mannerin, who's the president and founder of Mannerin Investment Council, and he is the portfolio manager of the Lifetime Achievement Fund, and he's the author of Mannerin on Money. As well, he's got a radio show called It's Your Money, and he's been on the air since 1986, a little longer than the Goldstein on Geld show, but I'm certainly happy to, to have him on the show and to uh, talk about uh, your view, Roland, of the, what's going on in the world today. Doug, thanks for inviting me. Uh, it happens to be one of my favorite subjects, so <laughs> uh, I'm frequently visiting with lots of people and I do a lot of lectures, so thanks for, for the invitation. Great. So I'm glad, I'm glad you're talking to us here in Israel. Uh, there are a couple of big topics I know you like to address. One of them is gold. One of them is safety. Are those two concepts appropriate to use in the same sentence these days? Uh, well, unfortunately, the majority of the people doesn't understand uh, the, what really is safe in today's world. They they want to rush to, uh, with a portion of their money that they call safe, they want to buy a CD or a bond. And unfortunately, those are what I call claims on financial instruments that are confiscation of your buying power. Um, let me share something important that I like to, in all my classes I like to teach this. It's called the philosophy of money. There's three things we can do with it. We can spend it, we can lend it, or we can be an owner. If you lend your money, Doug, you're going to lend it to the banks. And when you buy a CD or when you buy a bond, you're lending them your money. When you buy an annuity, an indexed annuity, you're lending your money. And here's the thing. Look over your shoulder at history. No one that I know of, no one you know of, has ever built or maintained wealth between taxes, inflation, and time. It's always been a guaranteed loss of purchasing power. And in today's world, with the incident two years ago, you could have a monetary collapse overnight and be wiped out. Mm -hmm. Only through ownership, the third thing you can do with money, can you build or maintain wealth. Every wealthy investor I know of, you know of, built it through ownership or inherited it through ownership. And by ownership, we're talking about your own business or shares of other successful businesses. So that's the philosophy of money. You must be an owner. Now, how you diversify an ownership of course, would be the next discussion where folks need to help of folks like you, Doug. Mm -hmm. So you said spend, lend, or own. So spending, I guess, is not a way to get rich because then you don't have it. Lending right. it is, uh, right. I mean, you know, there's certainly, the, the, the banks are out there lending money, no? They are, but that's not uh, how uh, my clients or your clients are going to build or maintain wealth. I tell my people in the book that, you know, if you're a big chicken, keep a year or two's worth of cash in the bank mm -hmm. in a loan dollar position so you've got it available uh, in case it gets the fan out, you've got some cash. But there is another item that, I've, that I uh, recommend for peace of mind, and that's called gold. Mm -hmm. Back in the 70s when Jimmy Carter was uh, leading America down the path of economic destruction, his intentions may have been good, but... You really need somebody who understands how an economy works to run a country. And by the way, we don't have that now. <laughs> but anyway, if the dollar was collapsing under Jimmy Carter, uh, my papa, I'm an Italian immigrant, uh, with an interesting other background, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> papa said to me, so what are we going to do with my savings, Mr. College Smart Guy? Uh -huh. I said, papa, the more I learn, the more I realize how little they've taught me as a broker. Patience. But down the road, the first thing I did do for him is I bought him gold. In the 1970s. Coins. And then I, in the 70s, mid-70s, it was 150 bucks an ounce. Wow. And uh, then I bought him a portfolio of gold mining shares, a mutual fund of gold mining shares. And I've said to him and to all clients ever since, I hope you don't make any money here. It's like going home, hoping your house is burned down so you can collect insurance. Having said that, of course, we made a lot of money there. <laughs> <laughs> right now, the portfolios that I manage are 7% in gold shares as a hedge. Mm -hmm. you don't think gold? I hope I don't make any money there. 
Right, because you don't want to have to need that hedge to protect you. No, that's right. One of your neighbors, Warren Buffett, who's also out there in Omaha, is, has spoken more negatively about gold. He says that it's real pretty, but uh, you know, there's only so many necklaces everyone needs, and it's not the same as owning a company. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, he said that 30 years ago, too, when I was 150 an ounce. <laughs> and, and like I said, I'm, I hope I don't ever make any money at it, but with the history of civilization, there's only one thing you could have walked through the pages of history with a handful of. And it's not a pile of green pieces of paper. It is, in fact, gold. So that's the only thing that gives me peace of mind. If I wake up tomorrow and there's been a financial panic caused by Greece, Portugal, Ireland, whatever, I don't care. Mm -hmm. You know, the dollar is a paper money. The euro is a paper money. It's, it's a house of cards. And what does it take to collapse them? History shows it's called a panic. If there's a panic, whew, I don't want to be there. So, uh, so I own some gold just in case. Yep, and the, my portfolios are all into ownership. I hire the best professional money managers I can find, like you do. And uh, if it hits the fan and the dollar collapses, the euro collapses, when the dust settles and they come out with a new paper money or some form of prostituted gold standard, guess what? We will own 500 of the best companies in the world. <laughs> After the crash, maybe we'll own 490 of the best companies in the world. We win. Mm -hmm. The guy who's been sitting in banks and CDs and annuities loses. So. I got you. We are talking to Roland Mannerin, who's the president and founder of Mannerin Investment Council. He's also the manager of the Lifetime Achievement Fund and is the author of Mannerin on Money. Um, in that book, you actually talk about what you refer to as the annuity shell game. And you've mentioned annuities a couple of times so far now. Are annuities the place for people who maybe are getting older and need that kind of safety? You know, knowledge gives you the power to invest in better ways. If, if a client comes to me terrified by what's going on, I will discuss a variable annuity with a guaranteed income provision with them, but that's not my desire. Mm -hmm. um, most people who buy the indexed annuity because of the sales pitch will lose if the dollar collapses, or they'll lose slowly to inflation. That's just the way it is in life. I hear. Is inflation something that we should be watching out for in the U.S.? I guarantee it will be there. <laughs> look at a chart of the dollar. The dollar ran sideways when it was backed by gold until 1913 when the Federal Reserve was created. Then the curve heads up in an unending. $20 used to be a man's labor for a month until the Federal Reserve was created. So as long as institutions exist like that, there will be inflation not here, not only here in America, but everywhere on this planet, including Israel. <laughs> so, a two or three percent inflation will destroy a retired person's income. By the time they get very old, they'll be collecting coupons because they have to. Mm -hmm. I hear. So, so what? what you affairs. So, this goes back, I guess, to the first thing you started talking about, which is the importance of ownership. So, what should people own? They should own the best businesses in the world. One of my heroes was Phil Carre, and at age 98, he was interviewed on a TV show. And the interviewer said, well, you're 98. Uh, according to conventional wisdom, you only have 2% of your money in stock. <laughs> uh, and the gentleman said, nonsense. I own good businesses, and I have since I was young, and that's the best place in the world for money that you don't need to spend tomorrow. Mm -hmm. That was his answer. So... Uh, <laughs> Okay, and so that you're talking about owning shares, businesses, as opposed to, for example, buying properties, buying commercial real estate, and renting it out. Actually, I do, I do all of it, uh, but uh, right now we're only about uh, 10, 15 percent in commercial real estate. And what we do there is the same thing. We look for the very best professionals uh, who do it the right way, who do it the way I would do it if that's all I did. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of good ones. And there's also a lot of bad ones. So. Uh, the average consumer out there needs the help of somebody like yourself, Doug, or, or myself, who know the difference between somebody dazzling us with brilliance or baffling us with bovine excrement. <laughs> I hear. Um, and do you look <laughs> around? No, I know what you're saying. No, I think it's important. A lot of times people say, no, I'd never buy a, you know, I don't want a fund because they're, they charge fees. Say, well, you know, they're not going to volunteer for you, but they're actually going to sit and watch your portfolio. Do you think it's appropriate for people to trade their own accounts? 
No. Uh, very few people do well. The, the bottom line is 95% of uh, people in the world lose their money gain. Only 2 or 3% actually achieve financial independence, build and maintain wealth. So for the majority of the people, uh, I think it would behoove them to pay somebody like you or me a small fee to manage their money. The fee is the least important factor anyway. It's the performance. Mm -hmm. It's the performance. Look at the performance. Look at the risk in, in the in the whole package, and uh, you know sometimes I think I, I should charge a much higher fee <laughs> than I do. <laughs> I hear. So when uh, you travel around, you said you're originally from Italy. Do you do you, do you look not only for uh, personal travel around the world, but also in terms of investments, any special places that are catching your eye at the moment? Not really. I think the best bargains in the world right now are in America. Wow. The uh, Brazils uh, are overpriced. China, in my opinion, is a disaster waiting to happen. Uh, so the majority of my portfolio is U.S.-based. However, we do have some portfolio managers that buy international um, Europe, uh, emerging markets, but it's a small amount. Mm -hmm. So when you sit on the moon, look at the planet, and you look for the best bargains on the planet. If you do that, and then you hire the very best professionals who that's all they do, as an example, buy, say, small caps in Europe or small caps in America, you're going to come up with some very fine product, a very what I would consider safe. But let me share this also. The very first thing I told my papa when I invested for him outside of gold and I bought him a mutual fund of common stocks. I said, Papa, you're going to lose money two, three times per decade. And once in a while, it's going to be a big one. Cross your arms. Use those as opportunities to buy more. And once in a while, there's going to be a big drop, like in 73, 74, again in 82, and 87, and, and here again in, uh, in uh, 08, 09. Those are opportunities. You know, on my radio show, I, I told people that are early 09, this is a generational opportunity. Throw caution to the wind, beg, borrow, or steal. <laughs> Get the money invested. So, and since then, we've more than doubled. Wow. Well, that is very inspiring advice and, uh, and very insightful, and I really appreciate the experience. We're just about out of time. Ronald, let me just ask you, how can people learn more about what you're doing? Mannering.com, M-A-N-A-R-I-N. And uh, there they can access the order the book. I would recommend reading the book. Uh, it's essentially what I've been teaching for some 30 years. Mm -hmm. and that's a good start. And then they call you. All right. And they say, Doug, <laughs> help. <laughs> All right. Roland Mannerin, thank you very, very much for joining us today. I wish you the best of luck, and I hope that we'll get to see you in Israel soon. Peace and goodwill, Doug. Bye-bye. You've been listening to the Goldstein on Gelt Show with money maven Doug Goldstein. Doug's weekly radio show is heard around the world, but if you miss it, you can download the podcast at www.goldsteinongelt.com. The Goldstein on Gelt Show gives you up-to-date financial ideas so you can get on the path to financial freedom. If you'd like your questions answered on the air or off, send Doug an email to doug at profile-financial.com. It's your money for your future, so join Doug every week to build your wealth on the Goldstein on Gelt Show.